demonstrate for you our next project. It's called Spirit Ball with Stand. And we're going to be using hand building techniques for this project. The tools that you will need will be a wire tool, a carving tool, either big or little, big or little. And then <clears throat> later on you'll need various uh, embellishing tools. So things that will help you slip and score, so like a comb. A, a spoon can help you smooth out edges. Carving tool, various pointed edges to make textures. And so those are the tools you will need. The first thing you're going to do is measure out, weigh out, a one pound clay. So to do that, I want you to be kind of careful. You're going to use the wire tool. You're going to tighten it. And then you only need to go about an inch or, inch or so. And then pull evenly on both sides. And this will be a lot more than one pound. So you're going to cut it in half for the next person. So maybe about this much. But to check, you're going to use scale. Make sure it's on, zeroed out. I have here one, and if you're not exact, that's okay. Just get close. Then make sure you see this back up. Close it really good because if the clay dries out, then you can't use it anymore. You have to turn it, you have to recycle it. <clears throat> so I want to conserve my clay. So instead of folding it in half, I want you to pound the sides because when you fold it in half, you actually put air bubbles in it. We want to avoid air bubbles. If you have air bubbles, eventually they will pop when they go in the kiln and you don't want these to explode. So right now I'm compressing the clay, I'm hitting the sides until forms a box. So I'm going to continue to slap the sides. And this is compressing. We're compressing the clay. It actually makes it stronger because all the molecules start laying on top of each other. Clay molecules are kind of like plate and plates. And right now they're all like that, like that. So when you compress the clay, it forces the molecules to sit on top of each other. And you have a more dense piece of clay be less likely to break. So you're going to continue this. It's really important that you don't overwork your clay because when you say you were to like spread this out and then push it back together, you're letting all of the surface area expose to the air and it starts getting dried out. And you don't want your clay to dry out inconsistently because then it's more likely to crack. And then once it gets dry, you can't get it wet again. You can, but it just turns to mud. Okay, you want your clay ball to be perfect. So I'm smoothing it out with my thumbs. Any cracks? Now you have roughly softball size clay ball.
Alright, the next step is to divide this in half and we're going to extract the clay inside until it's about no thicker than your pinky or the thickness of a pencil. Take your wire tool again. Make sure it's clean. And we're going to take your ball of clay and put it in half. You also want a canvas. This is canvas to protect the table from clay. Okay, so I have my half clay ball here. On the inside, I marked with a pencil where I'm going to carve out. Now, then I'm going to carefully carve out all this clay. This one I've kind of finished and I'm take my fingers and I can check make sure it's all evenly thick even thickness on the outside so carefully going in carving out two halves here that are evenly carved out and I've checked them to make sure that they're all even. I can even, I still need to smooth out the inside, but if it's time that you need to clean up, then what you can do is take some plastic bags and carefully sit them in the plastic bag. They're not connected. And if you really want them to stay moist, so that will seal the air from getting in up on the clay and drying it out. But the next step is to smooth out the inside and then add a little bit of clay dust so that when we put in our rattles they don't stick to the sides. So this project is called a spirit ball and it's more like it's, we're making a musical instrument. So inside this we're going to put little clay pebbles and the smaller your pebble the higher the pitch will be after it's fired. So you can decide if you want to do a lot of pebbles, or if you want a deeper sound, then make your pebbles bigger. And so that's the next step. So I'm working with this extra clay on the inside. I'm going to make some pebbles. So I'll start. I'm going to make my pebbles all the same size. So there's a consistent sound. But I want to make them kind of small so they're a little bit higher pitched. So I'm rubbing myself cleaning off my area. I'm going to make some tiny little pebbles. made a snake and I'm cutting it up. I'm going to take each little piece and I'm going to roll it so it will bigger. Not 
Just try to make a little ball. Just put a little chunk in your hand. Okay. You're going to take the clay powder and you're going to coat the inside of your clay pottery. This is really fine stuff. You don't want to breathe it in. It's just not good for you. It's gross stuff. So just put it along the edge. This will keep our pebbles from sticking to the sides. Just need enough to coat the inside. And then dust on the inside and all of your pebbles is to attach these two sides together. You can't just do this because when this clay dries it wants to pull apart. You have to use a kind of a velcro texture on each side to get these two adhere to each other. So that's where this tool comes in. We're going to score. Really rough it up, and this will force them to become one clay ball. So, in there. this is called slip. Slip is kind of a mixture of clay and water and it makes a really great glue for um, gluing clay pieces together. So <clears throat> I've scored it already so now I'm going to add water. This will soften up this edge and they will stick together better. Before I attach these, I'm going to go ahead and put a hole. You need to put a hole somewhere in the in your um, spirit ball because if you don't, the whole thing will explode when it goes in the kiln because the air needs to be able to escape at some point because when it gets in the kiln, everything heats up really, really hot and all the water evaporates and so all the water inside here and you will turn into vapor and needs to escape. So I'm going to put a hole right here. And I'm going to smooth that out. You want to make sure that you can see through that hole. It's big enough to allow you to escape. So now I'm ready to attach. I've scored, I've slipped, and now I'm going to attach. 
I'm going to press together. You can kind of see the water coming out. It's a good sign. Pressing these sides together. And I'm going to smooth it out. Good tool for smoothing out the crack is this tool. Just go back and forth. So the hole in before makes it easier to keep this shape because the air can escape from the inside. So now now we're ready for embellishing. So it doesn't get dried out. Alright, so now that I've got my spare ball made and the little beads are on the inside, ready to do my planning and then start embellishing. So I've got my plans here in different pictures. I decided I'm going to do kind of a Greek athletic theme and so I'm going to start by making my base. So you've got your spirit ball and then your base. My base is going to be kind of a curve, an iconic, ionic column. So to start that, I'm going to I'm going to do the same process with that I used for the ball, but this time I'm going to make a column. So I've got other. I'm going to wedge it. So to wedge the clay, you need your canvas. And I'm going to. It's kind of like kneading dough. I'm going to press with my palm of my hand and I'm going to pull back the clay and it's going to wedge the clay so it's actually going to spin it and cause all of the clay to sh be shoved together. So if you look at this, it's going to kind of look like it's spinning. And that's what's happening when you're wedging clay. It's kind of twisting all of that the clay molecules closer and closer together. My uh, base, the same way I form it to my ball, and then I'll show you the next step. This is way too thick to go in the kiln. What would probably happen is the moisture inside the very middle would break and expand and then my whole column would just break apart. So I need to cut this in half and carve out the inside just like we did our just like we did our um, spare So now I have these halves and I'm gonna draw where I'm going to carve so that I can make sure that I don't Yeah, 
have here kind of a base palm stand. I wouldn't leave this on here now because this isn't very strong. After it gets in the kiln and then comes out, then this will be strong. But don't just store it like this because this will probably crush this since it's not ceramic yet. It's just clay. Okay, so I'm gonna I'm not gonna work on this right now. I'm gonna keep it in here so it doesn't dry out. Now I'm gonna show you some different ways that we can decorate our spirit. Can um, use some sort of scoring or digging to make to pull off clay to make a design. You can also attach things to this by using that slip and score method. So I'm going to demonstrate both. And then also, lastly, you can use stamping where you press some sort of design in here. You don't take any clay away, you don't put any clay on, you just and press, you just press the design they're stamping. Okay, I wanted to do a little bit of, um, I wanted to add it to my ball. So I'm going to look at this. I'm going to keep the hole at the bottom. Okay, now I'm going to show you how to make a strip for a decorative element on your um, project. I would like a strip around the, around most of my egg ball and I kind of drew and drew kind of where I want it to go. So now I'm going to make this from a slab of clay. So I'm going to roll out a slab. Always keep all your clay that you're not using wrapped up and moist. You're going to need a rolling pin, a bit of clay, two pencils because this is the thickness, scoring tool, and slip and brush. All right, so I have my piece of clay, and I'm going to start flattening it down. I'm flipping it over and over. I'm going to use my rolling pin, and I want it to be kind of long, so I'm going to kind of roll it all in one direction. I'm going to use my Pencils as a guide for the thickness. I'm kind of flipping it as I go. This kind of helps. And now I've got the thickness that I wanted. So this is for my strip. It's a little thinner, it's okay. Thickness of a pencil. So now I've got. And notice I don't roll it off the edge. If you, when you roll it off the edge, then you get these thin spots. You want to kind of keep it in the middle. Okay. Now I'm ready to carve. Oh, yeah, I need a carving tool. So something with a pointy edge. And I'm going to draw my strip. You don't have to get it all at once. 
I'm going to make two strips of this. Okay. Now I'm going to cut it. So I have here a cutting tool. And for it to really hold good, you need to score this too. But I'm not sure where I need to score, so one way to find out is by setting it on there, wet, so I'm adding my water. And I'm going to just see where this kind of ends up. I'm going to pull it back off, and now I can see that it's right on this line here, I'm going to score this. Now I'm ready to adhere it. Smooth the edges. And that's how you do that. So attaching. A slab. 